person on our network today. Each, and I know we have some internationals and, uh, and we're delighted to have them. And we want them to share with us who they are, where they're from, and those kind of things. Introduce yourself, just do the, uh, the three minute elevator pitch. Uh, we want to hear from you. We want to know who you are. We want to know what you do. And then we'll move toward back to the former program. I take this moment because, you know, when it comes to people, you know, maybe it's the COVID thing. We've been locked away and restricted for so long. I just need to talk to people, I need to see people. I need to hear from people because it's such an exciting time. Here we are on the verge of restrictions being lifted. And uh, we just want to interact in a very bright side way. You know, so um, I'm gonna open the floor and don't let me call you out, but just share with us who you are, where you're from, what you do and, uh, and uh, what you're getting here. So uh, on that, uh, the first time I listen is Mr. Brian D'Souza. Go Brian, share with us, tell us. I uh, muted, unmuted, yeah. No, we can hear you. Okay, good. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm from Mumbai, India. Um, I'm fr uh, from the field of international business all my life. So I have, I'm doing consultancy in, the, uh, in export business operations. I um, conceive objectives for promoting trade between buyers and sellers from different continents. So basically my services include, you know, market assessment, counsel on rules and regulations of various markets, um, logistic support and sourcing and development products to meet individual buyers and market requirements. So my expertise has been business, of course, mainly between India and other countries basically Africa and even the US. Um, thank you for this um, program on cybersecurity. I've uh, learned quite a lot um, and it's a great takeaway from here. Uh, it's uh, interesting that, you know, um, this cyber crime is so different uh, from our tr traditional crimes where, you know, there is a direct physical evidence and uh, with, uh, from my experiences from, uh, you know, uh, in my business and the companies I worked with and even from the social circle people, I uh, found it uh, difficult to actually get evidence, you know. So this is the very challenging part of um, uh, cyber crimes, you know, and unlike, you know, maybe rape, extortion, burglary, and murders, you know, there is a scene of crime, but here um, there is, we don't know where the scene is, you know, so it's out there in the World Wide Web. So, um, um, so this is uh, our challenges and I would love to, you know, study more on these aspects. I learned a lot today and um, we can, uh, I'm sure we... Uh. I think we did. Uh, can, it's... I think we lost him. You know, everybody, Mumbai is under attack with COVID. Uh, there's also a person who we are fundraising for, and I'll make sure that you have her information. Uh, she's having a liver transplant as we speak, and there's a shortage of beds and there's a shortage of ventilators. So if anybody would like to make a donation, I would uh, guide you to those resources, even $5, $10, can uh, save her life. And it's very sad for me because usually when I used to see these messages floating around the internet, uh, I never thought I would see the day where people that I know uh, are sharing these messages. I always thought they were scams and spams and I ignored a lot of those messages on the internet. And it was very sad for me to see so many of my friends um, asking for assistance at this time. So I just uh, wanted to throw that out. How is Mumbai, Brian? We seem to have lost you. They just came out of a tornado yes. and there's been power outages yes. out there. So thank you for Robin. joining us. In I think Robin. Shukla's yes. on the call too. Shukla, can we see you? Yeah. yeah His Mr. family Shukla, had please. COVID too. All right. Please, Mr. Shukla. 
I really think these are brave people to come on the show. So thank you so much. Yeah. So Brian, okay. tell us, tell us everything. Yeah. We lost you yeah, for a minute. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, well, um, yeah. So the uh, I was uh, saying that you know the um, a lot of the social media which we see here, especially out here in India, Facebook and others. Uh, they are governed by international laws, but uh, a lot of laws in India which uh, are not effective in, as far as these are concerned. And uh, so we see um, a lot of uh, complacency, lethargy on the part of social media companies. Uh, so uh, this is something which we need to address, you know, and uh, worldwide. And um, the um, also the um, the you know, a lot of the apps which we download, uh, even from Google Play Store and from uh, even from iPhones, the, many of them are not genuine. You know, it's, there are a lot of apps which are, you know, uh, which are, uh, they have some, uh, uh, it, I mean, they are uh, probably compromised. And this is uh, why, you know, we, uh, we take it for granted, you know, and so we need to study uh, whatever we uh, download. We need to study all the regulations, the the, uh, the SOPs. Probably the, uh, look at the finer print. You know, what are the uh, what are they uh, the the, the uh, what are they specifically uh, entailing? You know, because we just download and we use, but we don't know uh, where what information is being shared. So okay. this is what um, I wanted to uh, just speak in a brief. Yeah, very good. thanks. Once thank you, again. Brian. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate your comment. That's a so. very good point. Okay. Uh, okay. If there are these apps, and sometimes you get very exciting images, and sometimes you get even messages from reputable companies, but they're bogus and they're fake. So always make sure you double check. What I do is I always double check that the website exists. I mean, I know people have duplicate websites as well, but that's my go-to. Uh, does anyone else want to share yeah. uh, how to avoid no. downloading the wrong information? Uh, Any no. tips? We're going around the room here, so we want to hear okay. from Ron. Ron, uh, share with us. Ron. I use my technology here. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Hey, I'm Ron Cisneros. I'm a co-author of the book with another guest, Mike Pagin, who's on this uh, on this uh, call as well. Uh, Thirty years human resources. Uh, all the topics we've talked about uh, being in HR. I think I've hit every single one of them, from bullying at work, harassment, to wellness programs, to uh, you name it. So it's a very, very, uh, very good topic. Uh, I relate to it. I think as an HR professional, we're kind of the company counselor confidant. So uh, I, I've heard a lot in the last 30 years. Uh, uh, unlike our younger author, I, I'm a I'm new author. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> started later on and decided uh, that I want to put my skills to the test. And uh, Last year, uh, actually 2020, I decided to start a book. And uh, Mike, my good friend who, uh, who writes a great cancer blog, uh, I was reading, is a good writer as well. So I sort of reached out to him and challenged him to, to help me with this book. I wrote the first chapter or so and sent him another one saying, hey, take it anywhere you want to take it. And a week later, he sent me back his, his chapter. I thought, wow, he took it there. So. We, we did this back and forth until we realized we had to talk daily to find out where to take the book, the characters. It is a uh, pre-COVID book. It is, uh, it is fiction, but we thought we wrote a pretty good story. So I appreciate being invited on this call. Uh, I'm very fascinated with, with these topics and they're very timely. What's interesting is as we were talking about uh, cybersecurity, I just received a text from, um, I think it's called a, uh, energy drink who wanted me to put a sticker on my car and I'd be paid five hundred dollars a week if I did that <laughs> so I quickly <laughs> deleted the text and it happened during this uh, during this uh, presentation so I thought oh very timely I just got I just got very good, very good. thank you thank you uh, Ron right. I appreciate your comments and and thank you for being here it's going to be we, we you're coming on in a bit uh, and, not, and we want to recognize your partner there Mr. Mike 
Paston. And if he could come in and say a few words, I thank you for being with us. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, Ron hit uh, our relationship. Uh, we've been friends since childhood. Uh, so we've known wow. each other a really long time. Yeah. As far as uh, my background, I was in the furniture industry, furniture, kitchen cabinet industry for a very long time, uh, mostly in international sales and uh, production. So uh, uh, unlike, uh, I think it was David, uh, I haven't quite hit the number of countries. I think I've been in about 35 different countries uh, working yeah. in the furniture industry. Uh, four, four years ago, I was hit by multiple myeloma and I was hit pretty hard. Uh, so I had to sort of give up my professional uh, job and I had to figure out what I was going to do from that point forward. And I started writing a blog. Uh, I, I created a 501c3 recently called uh, Masquerade, which advocates for immunodeficient uh, populations. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. So I've turned my life into a different direction uh, from, from where I was, although I still stay in touch with the furniture industry. Uh, I've got a lot of good friends there. Uh, still. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it. That's where I am now. And I'm an author now and I'm a blogger now. And and uh, now I'm running a founding and, and running a, a nonprofit organization. Very good. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I know a little bit about the furniture business. I point two times a year. <laughs> so awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Donna, Donna, please come forward. Uh, our eminent and professional financial advisor and director. Um, for New York Life, please, Donna, share with us. Sure. Uh, I was impressed by somebody naming off all the countries they've been to. I was in the Air Force for 30 years. I still don't know how many countries I've been to, but it was a lot. I, I'm sure it was close to the numbers you guys had, but but sometimes I was only there a few weeks. Sometimes I was there a really long time. So it uh, it was it was always interesting. I had an uh, interesting career. Um, I was an intelligence officer, so um, I had to go overseas to do my job because that's where the enemy is and that's where you have to do your operations. So um, I have probably seen more of the world than I have my own uh, United States of America. So one of my goals, uh, if I ever really retire, is to see America and, and uh, you know, catch up with all the states I've missed. So I'm Donna Four, I'm a retired uh, Air Force Colonel. Um, like I said, I spent 30 years in the Air Force and retired a few years back. I originally became a defense contractor because that's a very easy transition for military people is to go do something similar to what you were doing, you just do it as a civilian. But I got kind of restless. I began to think that I should do something other than work for the government. So although working for the government is certainly a fun occupation, <laughs> uh, you know, wink, wink. <laughs> anyway, I uh, <laughs> I can tell you guys stories about the federal government that would probably keep you up at night. But anyway, I uh, decided to look at other opportunities, and a company called New York Life recruited me off of LinkedIn. If you have a LinkedIn profile, you should use it for for a multitude of reasons to promote your book to find a job, to find people to network with, to you know, promote your events. But I, I get a lot of traction off of LinkedIn. If you don't have a profile, it takes five minutes, people. It's real simple. Don't use Facebook so much. Use LinkedIn. It's for business. So I'll get off my soapbox about that. But um, one of the things I want to mention quickly about New York Life, um, for the folks still on the call from India. So New York Life has now donated over $300,000 to two separate um, nonprofits to help fight the COVID epidemic going on in India. One of them is called Project Hope. The other uh, nonprofit is the American India Foundation or AIF. So I'm really proud to let you all know about that. And I know 300,000 is a drop in the bucket, but every little bit helps. So um, I also wanna mention real quickly, my company is offering money to assist families who had a loved one who passed away during COVID if the loved one was a healthcare worker, because obviously the heroes of the war, and I'll call it a war, that this pandemic has been, has been our healthcare workers. So New York Life wants to help those families since um, they, they had a loved one who was a hero to us. 
So um, if you know someone or if your own family was impacted because your family member was a healthcare worker, please get in touch with me and I'll put my contact information in the chat. So that's the kind of company I work for. Um, they're big hearted. When they see a problem, they like to help. So um, I'm very proud of their commitments to uh, you know, their clients, to countries in need, to uh, situations that demand some kind of help and response. So uh, what, I, what I do is I help individuals and I help families and businesses to protect what matters most to them. We've been talking about protection all day long, but one of the biggest things you can do for you and your family is protect your own self, right? Through some life insurance. And let me mention real fast, um, if you've ever had to deal with the death of a loved one where you had to um, you know, take care of their assets after they passed away, say probate a will or deal with the executing a will, the only asset, it's not really an asset, but the only thing that avoids probate, that'll go straight to a family without any delay is life insurance money because it's not considered an asset by the court. So if you're worried about your assets being tied up in a court and money not getting to your family when they need that money to take care of you know, the passing of, of you, then you need to consider having more life insurance because that's the only thing that'll bypass the whole probate process. A lot of people don't know that. So what I do is I help craft financial plans that help you with life insurance, long-term care, which by the way, long-term care is creating a lot of bankruptcy in America. A lot of families are faced with trying to put um, themselves or their loved ones in a place where they're safe and they can get the care they need. But those facilities cost anywhere between five to $10,000 a month. And it can create a serious uh, financial hardship for a lot of families. So we have strategies to help with that. We also are a full financial services company. If you need a retirement plan or an annuity or an IRA, we offer those kind of services as well. So it's great to be here today. Thank you, Claire, for hosting this. It's a very vital topic as we learned i mean last week i was literally hunting for over an hour just to find a gas station to fuel up my vehicle so i'm really glad we're talking about cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. thanks very much very good. thank you thank you donna i appreciate that too yeah your contributions are great in helping us understand preparing and protecting ourselves and so with that uh next speaker mr grover jackson please share with us Yes, Grover Jackson, one of 13, one of 14 siblings. I'm number eight in birth order. We penned the book, um, came in the market in November 19, uh, 2020. And currently we are promoting it. And uh, hopefully uh, just sign up um, to promote it on Constant Contact. But basically it's about our upbringing from, uh, I went back, uh, back 1827, found my great, great, grandparents, and just updated our family history from there, including uh, quite a bit in the book about myself uh, since I started writing it and inviting my siblings on. I'm not egotist. I just uh, like to laugh at myself. And so uh, they laugh at me, call me crazy. Bottom line is um, we uh, talked about our own individual uh, upbringing and what made us who we are and how we got where we are, wherever that is. Um, 10 of us got college degrees. I was the first uh, in birth order number eight and uh, first to uh, to get a master's, first to uh, ride on the airplane in the family that is, and then first to leave the country. I uh, served two years in the Peace Corps in Kenya, East Africa, which I had some very dear friends there now. I went back last uh, January, got back to America just before the pandemic hit. Uh, but I have uh, friends there and I communicate with them uh, weekly. And basically my, uh, I hate to even talk about myself because my whole mission in life and my um, activity consists of trying to help other people. I have a spiritual gift of serving and giving. Don't have a lot of money to give, but I can serve and I do a lot of serving and I try to motivate others to serve and uh, give. And as a result, make other people's lives a lot better than, uh, than it would have been without uh, other people's involvement. So I get joy to doing that. And also I'm very engaged in my college class um, and we call the class agent and the person who leads the class and motivate other classmates to give. And in the book, I write a lot about my uh, college time there, which was very, very good. But uh, my second year of school, I thought I was so smart. Not really, but I didn't study as hard as I did. I thought college was easy. First year was easy. 
And so I figured I'd lay back the second year and not study. So I, as a result, I got an unpaid vacation for a, a semester. And of course, <laughs> when, when I went back to school, uh, I, I, I hunkered down and uh, did well and, uh, and did join the Peace Corps. And the rest of the history, I was... I talk about my corporate days uh, at a later time because there's a, a lot of funny stories there and I had a lot of enjoyment. And in fact, there's anyone on the line who had uh, five jobs in seven years, professional jobs, now not just jobs, but professional jobs. No, I, I, had, don't think, no. I had five in seven years. And now I'll tell you later on how I got them, but uh, I was a financial major. And uh, in fact, I was a gentleman on the phone earlier. Uh, who was the uh, Ken, I believe. Uh, I used to teach finance class at FIU back in the day when it was first when it first got started. I was a banker in Miami, Florida at the time, and I enjoyed my time. My average, I was about thirty-one. My student average student age about twenty-five, and they were working full time in corporate America. So obviously, I learned a lot from them. But um, I haven't, you know, gotten an MBA in finance and worked in New York. I knew a little bit more about finance than they did, uh, but. Uh, and the funny story, uh, this is, and I'm gonna shut up. I was, uh, I retired from IBM after I left the banking industry. And I was talking to a, a, a hospital in Miami and the name sounded for me, but I didn't recognize it. But anyway, I was selling the IBM product and he recognized me and said, DeGrell, you do you realize I was one of your students when you taught finance at FIU? And uh, anyway, we had a good relationship and I wind up, he wound up buying the product for me. but. Uh, in sales, I learned a lot and met a lot of great people around the world and, and particularly in the United States. And Donna, you travel more foreign countries than I did, but uh, hey, I got you covered on the U.S. side. I've covered all the states except Oregon, Montana, Idaho, and the Dakotas. So I've got those on my <laughs> list. But that's Very all good. for me. Okay. Thank you, Grover. Appreciate that. What a, what a, that, a, that, uh, a vivid history. Mama, Mama, how about that? Next up is, um, is Carol Brown. Great day, great day, everyone. Uh, Donna, you made me smile when you said about being in government service. I retired from the post office for 27 years, and you talk about something to keep you up at night. I could share stories with you there. Uh, it's been such a great uh, morning. Um, information about cyber security, a lot of things that we don't think about, but to open up our minds. So thank you for all the guests that shared. Uh, very informative. Um, I am Carol A. Brown. I am an independent beauty consultant with Mary Kay Cosmetics, and I teach skin care. We have aromatherapy and body care. I see there's mostly men on the, on the line this morning, but yes, men need to take care of their skin. Yes, men like to moisturize. You have to protect your skin. You know, do need to protect your skin. Yes. So I, I have a lot of uh, male clients. And we, for those who have a beard, we have a beautiful new beard oil that softens up your beard and makes it very nice. So yes, uh, Mary Kay has been around for 57 years. Um, Mary Kay is a, a dynamic entrepreneur that wanted a business with no glass ceilings for women that back in the day when she was in the 60s, she would train men and they would always uh, promote her, them over top of them. So we have an awesome uh, business of uh, beauty consultants in over nine countries, over 2 million. And what is so awesome is that everyone knows, you know, uh, the best business is a home-based business, you know, to be your own entrepreneur. So anybody who wants to join my team, you can get information from me. And if you want more information on the products, I'll have my uh, information in the chat. But thank you for this topic, this awesome topic this morning. You have opened my eye quite a bit. <laughs> so I appreciate that. So thank you, everyone. I'm sorry, excuse me. Thank you, Carol. I appreciate that. Uh, we got so many people. I don't know if we can cover everybody uh, at this, session, but we are moving forward. And, you know, the whole purpose for this subject matter topic is that, you know, and, and this is, I've said it earlier this morning, was that we've gone through the COVID and a cybersecurity attack. 
and uh, you know uh, the economic uh, wherewithal for our time, but all these things are going to come to an end, and we'll have to run soon. We'll have to run soon, but we also need to protect ourselves because we're exchanging and we're positioning ourselves in an economic business world that's completely international, and we don't know where we'll be. You know, I mean, and you don't know what you'll be faced with doing and the task before you. So we want to make sure that we're on the front end of preparing you and pu putting you where you need to be. Uh, and, you know, and, uh, you know and, uh, and the world and your experiences now are training you, preparing you. for what. And it, believe it or not, you may say, I'll never do that. Oh, no, can't say that. <laughs> you don't know where you're going to be, when you're going to go, who you're going to meet, what you're going to have to be doing, and who you'll speak to, and who your friends will be. So so we hope that in some small way we're helping you prepare. You know, so we've got uh, more and more ahead. I want to bring on now Mr. Craig Bajorn. Craig Bajorn, please share with us, please. Yeah, Hi. Uh, would you just like me to introduce or do you want me to go through my uh, short presentation? Yes. Short presentation, short preview. Okay. of the All uh, right. Well, hello, uh, everyone. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today. My name is Craig Bjorn, and I grew up in Zimbroda, Minnesota. Uh, my grandfather was a wonderful story.